history. This our first part's gonna be boring, not some kind of proof but that's the yeah, it's, like it's, you know, it's, it's open, it's open source, it's the, the group has been open to changes by other people. So over the years, and it's been many years, um, uh, things have gotten kind of not, 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 very, not very consistent in the, in the source code and stuff. So whenever you make a change, it's very hard um, not to affect something else. Um, so one of the things I started working on is, a, is, a, is an API that we can take the Vasti and break it up into smaller pieces. And we make a change to one of those pieces. It doesn't affect all the rest of it. We can introduce funds and stuff like that. Um, it's, I'm really surprised at how well it's actually worked. Um, already extracted the four, four importers and the, the VST effects. They're completely separate from the Audacity main code. Um, we can take this as far as we want, or not far, or, or, or just stop messing with it at all, because these guys don't really know about it as the other developers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, um, it, it, it actually worked out, because it has worked well. Like I said, I could extract the VST effects from a Vasti main code, if we we could go so far as if we find a bug in the in the VST effects, we could then proceed to change fix it in just the VST external and redistribute that and not have to create a whole new release of that asset just to fix one little bug. I don't know if we're going to go that far though because that, that becomes a maintenance kind of headache uh, about what's what releases what you know. So um, it, it's it's kind of hard to show you guys what that is because it's really under the covers. Um, but there's a couple of things I can show you. Um, I can say it's the exporters that I've worked on so far. I'm sorry, the importers so far. Uh, these imports here are the ones that I've extracted. Um, and this one actually doesn't, doesn't exist in the current audacity. I did that one just to prove that the API works and that it's easy to add new stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's not that, I mean, there's nothing really to see here. It's just, you know, just the imports, they work. <laughs> you know. But it's, it's the under the cover stuff that, that's really cool that most people don't care about. But um, there is one thing that just so happens there's something on the board over there that I want to show, which I didn't expect. Um, this is a, 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 an effect of built into Audacity. It's just a plain old everyday Wawa, where Wawa is. But it, 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 it takes the phone and modifies it. Did the effect and made it really slow. Uh, it, it, it happens to be slow because the API uh, gives us the ability to uh, to use <coughs> this uh, interface folder called Squig. Um, this particular one is written in Python, and uh, whoever asked, asked about Lua, Squig can create Lua code as well. So we could add Python scripting. To Audacity, Lua scripting, uh, Perl, wh whatever scripting engine you like can be added to Audacity very easily. Um, that's the same thing as the original while I like call it slow because Python is doing all the calculations and everything. Uh, it's a lot slower. Uh, could be made faster, but it was it was just a demo for here for this, so I didn't really bother. Uh, that's the same thing. I guess I'll let it go. <laughs> I wouldn't replace Nyquist with for effects for with Python or Perl or any of those guys. Nyquist is much faster than, than any of those could be. Um, so it, it was just a, a demo of that, that we can do so that we can use with that there's an API. Okay, it's so boring stuff over. Now I'm gonna show you something that's a little funner. Um, this is just a plain old everyday one volume tone, right? Um, one of the things that I just kind of threw together for, 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 for AE14 was real-time effects. Um, right now, when you apply effect, sorry, wrong well, has Um, 
when you go to a, to a, a, a apply is that you, you and, and you're not really sure the parameters, it's really kind of a pain in the butt to, to try to get things right. I mean, you, you go in, uh, we got this little preview thing here, but it's only you know six seconds or whatever the preview. Um, then you think you might have it right, so you apply it and you play it, uh, not quite right, you undo, you go to the effect again, just a real pain in the butt. So many people have asked for real-time effect. Um, uh, it's here. Um, so if we were to apply this effect, we could actually modify it as it's, as it's run. <laughs> Made it a little loud, so let's lower it a bit. <coughs> and we can play it. Um, it, it, right now, it's only for VST effects. I just didn't have time to do the rest of them. But it will be for the rest of them as well. Um, the next piece of it is this little guy over here. There's an effects rack now that you can have multiple effects. You keep your favorite effects in the rack if you want. You turn them on and off. I hate to call it a rack because it's kind of a major word and it's really not. It's <laughs> really quite ugly actually. I, 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 don't, I don't do graphics well, but these little guys enable the individual effects, turn them on or off. These are for bringing up the editor, you know, that little gooey thing. Um, moving the effects up and down in the rack. That's what these guys do. These, these make the effects favorite. You notice I, I, I just applied the course effect. It's not a favorite right now. Um, <coughs> any effect that you do becomes a temporary. And they all go to the rack. And it's basically temporary. If I actually close the audacity now and came back in, that bottom would have gone. Um, and you can also remove, you know, make them not favorite or whatever. Um, so this whole thing right here, uh, I can apply all these effects at once. Normally, you can't open multiple effects at once. Now uh, you can. If I can find the mouse pointer. Yeah. Um, you got a little frequency, guys. So we can play this. All the effects are currently on. Um, so I can actually go in and kind of play with the sound. Uh, and, 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 and it, because I have the analog track, I can actually see the result. No, I don't. <laughs> it is um, recording. For the wiki. Well, it, it's not ready yet. I don't hear this. So <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay. But yeah, it's, so that's, that's really it. I mean, that's, that's all it is. Um, that's all. That's all. Um, so, one of the things that, that I couldn't decide on, so I, I, yeah, it just applies the effects, right? Well, now it's actually in the audio itself. So what I did was I, I automatically turn off, disable the effect. But I think what I'm going to do is change that rather than leaving, because the user might want to leave their effect enabled and disabled. I'm just going to change it to where when, once the effect is applied, bypass will be turned on. The reason that is is because if I, if I go, um, remember it's real time, so if I apply the effect and then turn around and play it, and then I have this thing on again, we're going to basically, you're going to hear double, you know, double the effect. Are they in like sequential order? That's where they are. They are sequential, and and that's why that's why there's a, and that's why there's that move up and down thing. Yeah. So you can. I, I didn't really. Got, like I said, I, I just threw it together for the for the, for the conference. Um, I don't like the up and down. I'd rather actually have a drag and drop, so you can 
reorder them that way. Mm -hmm. And there's another thing missing that's real important, and that's the route problem. Uh, right now, it is left channel to left channel, right channel to right channel. In theory, uh, oh, and stereo to stereo, mono to mono. In theory, you should, should have the ability to, to say that the channel one goes to channel two of the next effect or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. <coughs> at, least, at least the fancy editors have that kind of thing. I don't know if I want to do that. Just I'm lazy. Uh, but that's that's it. That's all there is. I uh, think this would look at having small channels. What's that? I mean, how you know, the, the, the effects of being applied as you're going on there are looser being applied. Are you actually applying that you a small sample and applying each effect and then move on to the next bit? Actually, there was three cha three lines of change added to the audio I/O support. Um, it basically as as the data is fed to the audio device, it it basically if there's effects to apply, it runs over to the effect manager and applies those effects to, to that chunk of data that, that's going to the audio device before it gets to the um, So what yeah, it's it's actually a pretty small chunk like that 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 it is <coughs> I've actually gotten thirty two effects running at once. Um, wow. And it wouldn't have been 200 if I had chosen effects. Some of the effects like guitar rig and stuff like that, they, they add a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of things. Is this is a new laptop, or I'm going to say it No, <laughs> no it's, and this is that little 1.6 gigahertz laptop too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leave that to automate. <coughs> leave that to automate the parameters and automation. Um, it, it, it saves them. Uh, that's all I can tell you. It doesn't, doesn't actually. Would you not be able to record, or say you're moving something up and down, or grab and grab, or whatever? Not be able to record the automation of what you're doing? It does not do that. No, it doesn't do that. All it does, it, um, that's, that's, that's something that, that has, has been discussed hmm. recently. Uh, but no, it, it, it is just like the regular effect they are today. Okay. You apply the effect, and it's done. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's done. Uh, confused with, uh, so, so you were applying effects just when you hit the play button, but then there was also, I well, mean, if, if you wanted to... That's not really applying at that point. You're, 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 that's basically preview. Uh, uh, I've removed the preview out of the individual effect dialog, <coughs> and that's basically real-time preview. Um, so it's, it's, it's applying it to the data that's getting sent to the audio device. But, but the apply button, then it modifies the actual data in, 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 your, in your project. <coughs> Basically, you're committing the change. You know, you're committing what you're, what you're hearing. Um, what happens if you put multiple tracks over? It'll, 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 what, whatever you have selected, it's no different than what's, what there is today. If you, know, if you have 10 tracks selected. So then <coughs> they get mixed to stereo, then the effect gets fired. Okay, well, it's okay. Extreme, right? See, now you're, now you're not, because you move. Okay. <laughs> um, the data that gets sent to the audio device is, is stereo. It's two channels. So, so, we, yeah, yeah, so if you have five tracks, 10 tracks, they get mixed down to, to two channels. That's what you're applying the effect to. Uh -huh. um, the, the real time, the real time review. That's what, yeah, that's what you're applying the effect to. So it's not. I guess that's not great, no. but the the if if we can do the the. I think if we can do the 5.1 <coughs> channels out to the audio device, uh, that's a little different though. But that's going to apply to this. All the music and soloing would be applied to yeah, it, whatever you chose. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it truly is whatever, it's, it's the last step uh, before the data actually gets sent to the other device. It's where it's intercepted. Um, so anything that's done before that, we, we actually do clip it in the audio device. Um, that's applied before the effect. Um, might be good, might be bad, I don't know. It was, it, it was an easy place to put it. <coughs> so if, if you, uh, if you have uh, multiple tracks and, and you listen to that through an effect, and then you mix it down and you apply the effect. If you actually then, when you commit the effect, do you then go individually to the yeah, yeah. yeah, so you get a different. A little different sound, sound. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it depends what effects you're applying, doesn't it? 
So basically, any any reverb or filter, um, should, the order doesn't matter because I was <laughs> and I wasn't hearing. It. So I yeah. so okay. So I think I've been using reverb and yeah. and, and flangers and uh, yeah, because all all those things yeah. flangers. Signal, I mean, that's a nonlinear, but nobody ever knows that. Um, and this it will be available for microphones as well. 
Um, any effect that we have. Um, we'll, we'll so, so one interesting thing about Nyquist is um, those, um, like while the sound is playing, I mean, what happens is, is those parameters get fed into a function that uh, then generates the sound. And the only way to change the parameters is to go back and reapply the function. But the function applies to the whole sound. So there's but except for version four. Uh, well, we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Version four, <coughs> four and, it's, and, it, and this is probably what's uh, to even to mention it, but with version four, you actually can fill with a lot of data rather than the whole sound. Yeah. Um, and, and, and in that case, the parameters would be changeable with, with based on lot size, how many lot size small. Um, of course, that increases the, the amount of processing time. For that. We should talk, because I don't, that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> It, it does work. He, he, he's actually tried it out. It does work. It slows things down considerably. So it's not it's not really a very solid play. But uh, that's the only that's the direct that is the only way that you'd be able to do that in that case. Okay. Okay. Right. I, I can I can yeah, I can imagine that it works in some cases. I think it's this, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My question is true. I think it's probably <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But anyway, that's it's a complicated discussion, so it's good that we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're leaving you ahead. We'll skip tomorrow. We'll go to the public talk. It's tempting. It's very impressive. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. yeah. yeah.
So I, I, I moved all of that into the Vesting main code, and now all the effect does is it feeds that as a, it, it, it accepts that from Audacity, it feeds that up. He has no idea what a track is, he has no idea what a, uh, what, what steps in the selection of, uh, of, the, of the audio he's messing with. Um, um, it really does simplify the individual effects, and it will simplify maintenance to the effects and for us later on. We want to add a feature to all the effects. He had it rather than how many things you had. So, you know, like, it's all just uh, behind the scenes got what we do that, that we like. But if, 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 if these guys, I, I really think it's, it's, it's a, a major benefit because it will simplify us, our, our work. Uh, I'll be very happy with that. Can you share us through some of the tricks again? Okay. Anybody wants to play with them, you're welcome, more than welcome. There's, there's several different ones to play with. Like I say, I don't know what goes with what, you know, it's like do a course before a delay or, or before a whatever. But you guys do. If you want to play, have fun. Passionate is being booking in the past 20 minutes. How do I get the yellow labels on the tracks?